AI budget app? You know they hallucinate, right? With AI making more credit decisions, do you feel safe knowing it won't let anyone see how much you spent on eating out this month? Your AI budgeting tool is tracking, but what is it sharing and with who? Hey, I'm Theodore, and welcome to ASD, where we break down the complex forces shaping your world. Today's topic, the surprising risks of using AI budgeting tools and how they might be tracking more than just your expenses. Joining me in this discussion are Gwen and Charlie, our expert hosts, ready to guide you through the ins and outs of managing your finances in an AI-driven world. We're excited to have you with us. to when you first started managing your money, like so many choices and honestly so many ways to mess it up. Totally. And imagine trying to figure that out with student loans in a housing market that just feels impossible. Yeah. That's the reality for a lot of Gen Z right now. So it's no surprise they're turning to something new. Right. AI. Interesting. We're doing a deep dive into AI and personal finance today, especially how Gen Z is using it to manage their money. Okay. You synced over some really cool articles on this, so let's get into it. Yeah, and it's not just a small handful of Gen Zers yeah. just checking it out. Um, the ABA Banking Journal found that 37% of Americans are already using AI for some of their finances. Yeah. What's even more interesting is it's not just like automating those small tasks. The BMO Real Financial Progress Index actually found that almost half are using these tools to learn more about personal finance. Interesting. They're leveling up their financial literacy, not just balancing a checkbook. Okay, that's really cool. So why is this happening now? Why is AI suddenly like the hot new financial advisor? Well, think about it. Gen Z has grown up with technology that's personalized and intuitive. Yeah. They're used to instant and tailored information for their exact needs. Right. So when they're dealing with the adult world and the often overwhelming world of finances, turning to AI makes sense, especially when you think about the Cedar ISB article. Gen Z is graduating into crazy high housing costs and a job market that feels unpredictable. And the article said that more than anything, they're just terrified of surprise expenses they can't handle. Yeah, for sure. AI kind of offers that control and predictability, even if it's maybe an illusion. So instead of freaking out about that emergency root canal, they're turning to AI to plan for it. In a way, yeah. And this is where it gets really cool. Okay. These aren't those old clunky budgeting spreadsheets. We're talking about apps like Wally or Clio that connect right to your bank accounts. Mm. They track everything in real time and categorize it all automatically. Really? Imagine you're about to buy another coffee. Clio sends you a notification saying, hey, you're about to hit your coffee budget for the month. Still want that latte. That's the kind of in the moment personalized feedback these tools are giving. So it's like having a tiny financial advisor living in your phone that's also not judging you. Exactly. The Tech Funnel article mentioned that these apps go even further with something called predictive analytics. Yeah. What even is that? It sounds kind of intimidating. It's really not as complicated as it sounds. Predictive analytics is basically just using your past spending habits and patterns to try to anticipate your future needs and risks. Okay. Let's say you always overspend on takeout after a stressful day at work. The app would learn that pattern and could suggest some ways to manage your budget. Interesting. Maybe even offer meal prepping advice. It's like a crystal ball, but for your finances. So no more mystery charges at the end of the month. I'm starting to see why Gen Z is into this. But what about reaching those bigger financial goals? Mm -hmm. Can these apps actually help with that? Or is this mostly about avoiding overdraft fees? So we've been talking about avoiding those coffee-fueled budget disasters. Right. But what about the big stuff, like financial goals? Can these AI tools actually help Gen Z buy a house or invest wisely? Or are we stuck just thinking about our latte budget? That's a really important point. Right. It's not just about, like you said, managing day-to-day -day spending. It's about setting Gen Z up for a really solid financial future. Yeah. And the cool thing is a lot of these AI tools 
do way more than just basic budgeting. Some will actually give you investment recommendations that are personalized based on your risk tolerance and your goals. Mm -hmm. Others can help you visualize different financial scenarios. Like what if you saved an extra 10%? Okay. What would that mean for you when you retire? Right. The Tech Funnel article had a great example of this. You can actually use the app to play out different financial decisions, like buying a car versus investing that down payment. Oh, wow. And you can see the long-term impact of each choice. Okay, so that's a lot more sophisticated than I was picturing. Mm -hmm. But even with this really cool AI stuff, there's still a big piece missing, right? AI can work with numbers, but can it really understand the emotional side of money? You're totally right to be a little cautious there. Yeah. The Cedar Isby article talked about that, and it said that 64% of Americans don't think that AI can fully understand the emotional stuff that plays into our financial decisions. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's a good point. Let's say you get a bonus. AI would probably tell you to use it to pay down your debt because that's the most logical thing to do. Yeah, probably. But what if you'd been saving up for a vacation and you really need a break? Right. AI might not factor those things in. So it's kind of like having a financial advisor that's brilliant with numbers, but a little robotic, right? Because that's so good at the human stuff. Exactly. It makes you think, where does human judgment fit into all of this? That is the million dollar question. We can't just hand over all of our financial decisions to algorithms. Right. It's about finding a balance using yeah. the strengths of AI, like automation analysis and personalized insights. Mm but also recognizing that there are limitations. Yeah. It should be a collaboration, not a takeover. Like AI as a co-pilot, not on autopilot. But this isn't just about our personal finances, is it? The Future of Finance article mentioned how AI is changing things on a much bigger scale, too. Yeah, it's true. Should we be worried about robot stockbrokers taking over Wall Street? Maybe not robots taking over just yet. Okay. But it's something to keep an eye on for sure. Yeah. AI is completely changing the finance industry from how we do trading to how risk is assessed for loans. Yeah. And even though those might seem like really big concepts, they actually impact all of us. So even if someone never downloads a budgeting app, they're still in the AI financial world in a way. Exactly. Think about it. More efficient trading means potentially better returns on your investments. Oh, right. AI could mean fair loan terms for everyone or even new financial products that are made for specific needs. It's a ripple effect. And just like any wave, it could be good or bad. OK, that makes sense. So we've talked about AI changing personal finances and how it's kind of behind the scenes in Wall Street. But what about bookkeeping? Yeah. The Devi blog article was really interesting. It's not just about the numbers. It's about freeing up time and energy. Absolutely. And remember those bookkeeping tasks that we talked about, like categorizing expenses and reconciling accounts? Yeah. AI can streamline all of that for businesses, just like it does for personal finances. Okay. Imagine this, instead of spending hours every month trying to find all your receipts, right. you just have this clear and concise financial dashboard, all thanks to AI. That sounds like a dream come true for anyone who has a shoebox full of receipts they've been avoiding. It's a game changer. So are there actual AI accountants now? Is that what's happening? Not quite replacing humans yet. Okay. But it's definitely changing things. The Devi blog talked about some really cool tools. Yeah. Like there's one called bookkeeping.ai and it's supposed to be super user friendly. Huh. So that's great if you're just starting to think about a side hustle or something. Right. Then there's another one, Zini, that has a lot more features. Okay. Like invoicing, K-roll integration, all of that. It's like a whole finance department, but without having to make small talk with them. Okay. For someone like me who is not a numbers person, that sounds amazing. <laughs> It's like AI does all the boring stuff and then I can focus on the creative parts. Yes, exactly. That's what's so great about AI. It's not just about efficiency. It's about letting people focus on what they're good at. Right. So entrepreneurs can focus on growing their businesses. Freelancers can work on their projects and nobody has to worry about all that administrative stuff. We've covered a lot today. Gen Z using AI for help with budgeting AI, changing the entire financial industry, and even these like robot bookkeepers. Yeah, it's a lot. It feels like something big is happening. It really does. And it's exciting and a little scary all at the same time, don't you think? Yeah, for sure. There are so many amazing possibilities with AI and finance, but there are also some serious questions we have to think about. Yeah, like is this going to make an entire generation that depends on algorithms for every money decision they make? Mm -hmm. Are we losing something important when we take humans out of money management? 
That's a really good point. Well, we get so used to AI telling us the best option that we don't even think about trusting our gut or taking a chance. What about making mistakes and learning from them? Right, because sometimes those impulse purchases or that random weekend trip end up being a really important part of our lives. Exactly. It's not always about getting the biggest return or the smallest risk. Sometimes you just have to live a little. I love that. It's about finding that balance. AI can be powerful, but we shouldn't let it control us. Hmm. We use it as a tool to make good financial choices, but it shouldn't be the one making the decisions for us. AI is a co-pilot, not the autopilot. So as we're wrapping up this deep dive, what's the one thing you want our listeners to remember from all of this? I think the most important thing is to approach AI in finance with curiosity and also be a little cautious. Uh Don't be afraid to try out these different tools and see if they work for you and help you reach your goals. Yeah. But you always have to think for yourself. Don't just blindly accept the recommendations and remember what's important to you and what you want to do with your finances. AI is great with numbers, but only you know what those numbers actually mean for your life. If today's deep dive got you interested, make sure you check out the show notes. We'll have links to all the articles we talked about and some AI tools to help you get started. Thanks for joining us on this journey into AI and finance. Until next time, keep exploring and questioning and diving deep. As we close, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with someone who needs to learn how to save money. Ever had your finances or credit score destroyed? Or are you stuck in a cycle of never having a dime to save for a car or house? Would you risk using this literally months-old technology? Have you already tried it?